Greetings and welcome to Prof. Neil once again. It's a pleasure having you here on Friday afternoon, Friday the 27th of May 2022. And like every Friday, we premiere today also in the afternoon. Since a year we've been premiering. And this time, India's first mutiny at Vellore, 1806, not 1857 Meerut. This is a grouse that Prof. Neil has against the Delhi-centric CBSC, who cannot for the love of me, think beyond Delhi and Mangal Pandey. India's first mutiny did not happen in 1857. It happened in 1806 against the British, which as in 1857. But this happened at Vellore, in a, a region in Tamil Nadu, close to Th Madras now, Tamil Chennai. Though the mutiny only lasted a day, it was a major setback to the British establishment. It sent shockwaves to the, to the British. And uh, the suppression of this fellow Michuni also is considered reason for the sepoys of uh, South India not participating in the bigger 1857 mutiny. So, what are the reasons for this, this, order, this mutiny? Why, why, why did it happen? The orders from the British Army officers mm -hmm. that the Hindu sepoys could not smear the sacred ash on their forehead that we see usually Tamilians and South Indians do and the Muslims uh, suppose were told they could not spot a beard they had to shave the beard added to this was that they had to wear round hats this convinced them that they were going to be convict, converted to Christianity and then to instigate them were the family of Tipu Sultan, the late Tipu Sultan, he was slain. The family was lodged in the palace inside the fort. Tipu's sons instigated the sepoys also to revolt. The sepoys who revolted were lashed 90 times each. Now on uh, 10th July, at about 0 to 100 hours in the morning, after the wedding celebrations of one of the daughters of Tipu Sultan happened and they everybody called it a day and they went to bed 500 sepoys broke through into the fort and went berserk killing about 15 British officers and about 115 soldiers, British soldiers when they were asleep the three battalions of the Madras native infantry started rejoicing thinking they had done the impossible uh, they did not realize that one British officer, Major Coops, had sent a message to the nearest British base at Arcot. And uh, within no time, Arcot had, the officers at Arcot had, had put, put men together, troops together to come and take over Velour. The mutiny of Velour, the fort was quelled within 24 hours. And uh, about uh, the three battalions of the Madras uh, in native infantry were disbanded. Hundred of them died. Three fifty were injured. But it it had its effect as the orders about religion and uh, tradition were reworked all across the country by the British by the British for the uh, troops. They learned the lesson. Though it lasted only 24 hours, it, it sent a message to the British that you could not take the people of India for granted. And uh, the, the mutiny did not succeed because of uh, much like the 1857, a lot of parallels that uh, the first strike was done and then there was a leadership crisis. There was no clear focus on what to do next. And similarly, like in Delhi, there's the old, feeble, toothless Mughal, the last Mughal, Bahadur Shah Zafar, was anointed as the Shah, as the Bacha of Hindustan. And here it was Tipu's second son who was hailed as the King of Elo. The Union Jack was lowered and the flag of Tipu was hoisted. But it didn't last long. Like, like Badusa Zafar, 
the Tipu's family also was deported to Burma. That was actually the reason why the people of Velo were up in arms against the British. Because of Tipu's family being there. And the, the, the fact that they were being kept in the fort. Now this again, another, 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 another issue that I wish to bring here is the assumption of country that Madrasis or South Indians, they like the courage to be, to fight, that has been clarified here. The oldest battalion of the Indian Army is the then, is the then Nair Army of the Maharaja of Travancore in the 17. 04 was raised it it was it is integrated into the uh, madras regiment now uh, madras regiment being one of the oldest regiments of the country of the indian army and has seen action in flanders spain sri lanka ipk i mean the indian ipk force all the three wars with pakistan in the unp in the unp screen force uh, as a UN, uh, part of the unp screen force across the, across the world Burma, um, Siachen, etc. Everywhere it has seen action and they won the respect of their peers and their brother officers and their fellow troops and affectionately known as the Tambi Regiment, the Madras Regiment. They spot the crest of an elephant and that they earned because of the gallantry in the Battle of Asai in 1803 in the western part of India against the combined force of the Marathas and they led these, these Tamil, um, this Tamil regiment was, the Tamil regiment was led by, uh, by the commander who later was going to be known as the Duke of Wellington. Out of 7 out of 8, 28 army chiefs are South Indians below the deck. I mean, in, in, in the upcountry language, the Madrasis. And uh, if one can take an example out of hockey to show of uh, Madrasi bravery or courage, it has to be K. Swarmani. He is from Kurg, he is a Kodaga. Kurg is a place in uh, Karnataka. He was from the army. But he was a commando on the field more than anywhere else. His skills may be, not technical skills may not be sublime. But as I say, it's the fight in the dog that matters more than the size of the dog. And Swarmani had the fight in him. He was playing, he used to play left half for India and his army, army team. And he played in international hockey for India in the 70s and 80s. And he was known for his sliding tackles, which is which entails taking risks of getting injured. And when defending penalty corners, he was the charger, the man who rushed against the against the opponent who was hitting the ball into the net. That's dangerous, risky. But even he used to go off like a tracer bullet against even against the likes of Bowlander without any fear, throwing caution to the winds. Uh, not many are aware that the areas of Vaniambadi, Vellore and Ambur is almost like Punjab. Every second house is a home to an army man with at least three or four generations having served the army. So that's the, the South India and the army connection. But this not for the CBSE course. In the 70s and the 80s, there were three dons who ruled the underworld of Bombay and India for that matter. Bombay was India then. As, at least as part of that dawn, the underworld was concerned. There was Haji Mustan, whose actual name was uh, Sultan Mirza. He was from Kadalore and Tamil Nadu and who was the docks, was the king of the docks. The, the king of smuggling of India. He smuggled wristwatches and all these extra exotic items to India. And based on his life was written the script of Divar by Javed, 
जावेद सलीम सलीम जावेद एंड नामी ताब एस विच है प्लेट रोल ऑफ हाजी मस्सा एज अ डॉक वर्कर हु गोस अप टू बिकम द द किंग ऑफ स्मगलिंग एंड सेंट इफ यू नोटिस दैट यूनस परवेज इन दैट रोल एडवाइजेस अमिताभ टू कीप दैट बैच 786 टू ऑलवेज कीप क्लोज टू हिम बिकॉज दैट इन दैट वुड मीन बिस्मिल्लाह कनेक्शन विद हाजी मस्सा इज रिफ्लेक्टेड इन देयर so the second don varda bhai no need to introduce him varda raja mudaliyar mudaliyar is a community from tamil nadu enterprising community and this was enterprising he became the don the second don the king of dharavi the slums and the third don karim lala the pathan we don't need to go into him so embrace the questioning of cbsc history to enjoy learning the real turns of history thank you very much a good evening to you